Hi, my name is Avram Shalom, and well, today let's talk about garlic. Here, if you look at this, you can see that this is the actual wild garlic, its stem. Let me get a nice close up here. It stems just like that of like uh, an onion. So if you think of the uh, the onions that you get uh, that are um, chives, chive onions, okay? So if you take the uh, stem and you break it, you can smell the garlic, it's really nice. I'm in, the, I'm in my backyard right now, and basically I normally plant stuff out here, and I try to grow different types of uh, plants, as tomatoes, strawberries, and stuff, but I decided to just let it go wild this time, and I actually sat here was just like, you know, there's so much garlic, I can't believe how much garlic you got in the backyard, and uh, I didn't plant it, which was really cool. And uh, the funny part about it is, and this is the, the real hilarious part is, I actually plowed this whole field behind me, and I completely turned it up like crazy with my tiller. And now I have all this wild garlic just randomly here, and uh, it wasn't here the year before, and now I got this massive amount of wild garlic all of a sudden here now, and I'm just blown away by it, but it's really cool. So let me show you exactly how to dig up the wild garlic so you can see it. And uh, also, I'm gonna show you something real quick. Um, if you actually look in the Audubon Society book, you're gonna find this picture here. And um, I'm gonna show you in this book here in a second here so you can see for yourself uh, what it looks like. Um, in the picture, you're gonna see that there's a flower and you're gonna see the, the purplish kind of flower on it. Uh, the flower doesn't blossom until May to July time period. And um, so you can't see the flowers now, you just see basically this nice long stem. Um, which I'll show you here. It's basically this is what you're going to see here. You're going to see this nice long stem that's growing up. Um, it, it just has that kind of feel and look to it, like it does with chives. And um, you're not going to see the flower until, like I said, May and July time period when it comes out. But um, it's cool. So let me show you actually how to harvest this and pluck it out of the ground, and uh, you can see for yourself. I'll show you the end result when I'm done with all this, because I'm actually going to finish harvesting everything we I have in this area. I, I got tons of it, so. I'll show you when I'm done with it. Uh, that's all you gotta do here. I'll show you here. I'm just gonna stick my finger down here. So you can see this. Let me get down here a little further. Alright, I'll move this stuff out of the way here for a second. I'll just move down here. You can see that as I dig this out. I'm gonna close up on this second here, so give me one second here. I guess it's close to shot I'm gonna get here, right? So here, I'll put my finger down here, just kind of smoothly go around it. And down here. It's really nice and snug inside this dirt. See it's really clay like here, so see how the clay got going on in this mud here. Well, unfortunately, sometimes you take a shot and it fails on you, so figured I'll show you a better shot of this so you can see the actual bulbs of the actual garlic. So this is uh, uh, from another section I pulled up, but you can see the bulbs are right here, and uh, just got to clean the roots off um, and get it all taken care of, and you can uh, use it for eating some nice field garlic. So you can see right here, this is uh, what I'm talking about in the backyard. And, you know, I got a bunch of these garlic, right? Just growing right here, just just randomly growing, right? Most of the rest of the stuff you see in there is actually dead purple nettle. And in the far back, over here, which I'll take you over there. The medicinal use, which is also known for this plant, which is called Canadian garlic, is that the plant has an anti-asthmatic, carminative, carthiatic, diuretic, expectorant, and is also used as a stimulant. 
It can also be used as a tincture to prevent worms and colic in children and is also used as a remedy to help with those children who have croup. The bulbs can be eaten raw or cooked. It can also be used as a vegetable or a flavoring of soups and stews. The leaves can be eaten raw or cooked as well as the flowers, but the flowers have more of a stronger flavoring to them, especially since when the seeds begin to form. Here you can see some of the purple dead nettle uh, and it's uh, more a dying stage. It hasn't fully finished up its, its stage of basically going away. Um, over here, the more sun we have, the more you can actually see the purple dead nettle is completely you know, gone to nothing. It's just now these like, basically these yellowish type of deadish looking flowers. Where over here, if you look in these areas, like the more darker the area in the backyard it is, and the more uh, the dead nettle is still kind of like hanging around just a tad. Uh, but the rest of the stuff used to be actually purple dead nettle for the most part over here. But here, which I wanted to show you and stuff is, uh, this is all the uh, garlic. So here you have all this garlic here in this area, and uh, it's just growing like crazy, just all over the place. And so it just really, really is cool to be able to sit here and actually see all these wild edibles, um, which I'm sitting here actually going through to identify, because I got other plants here and stuff that I'm like, you know, what is this? I want to know what this uh, possibly is, because this stuff that grows naturally, and heck, it grows in my backyard, and why not take advantage of it? Just something to think about and stuff out there for you guys to learn about what uh, wild garlic looks like and you can see the stages and I'll, I'll show you a later stage as uh, the flowering kicks in around May, July time period and uh, I'll leave some of it out here so I can show you the growth of that so you can see the flowering stage of it. Well you can see I did all the harvesting, now let's do some cleaning up. So one of the things that I've been focusing on is learning all about wild edibles and the importance of it so I can harvest them and find them and go after them myself as uh, I do not in any way shape or form eat unclean animals and so therefore hunting is out of the game and that's because that's just how the Bible tells us as a Jew we are forbidden from whatsoever eating unclean animals and that's where I uh, encourage anybody to stay away from it themselves so we here at Maccabi Bushcraft, we believe in, you know, doing everything in the woods, the kosher way. And uh, so, you know, we don't believe in uh, going out there and taking a bow and arrow and killing an animal. Uh, the Bible says when it comes to slaughtering, the shechita method has to be through a uh, smooth and very sharp knife. And of course, most people when they go hunting, they're killing the animal on the spot and we can't eat animals that way. And so that's our method. Everybody has their belief and standard, but we hold to a higher calling. And so therefore, this is the standard that we believe and hold on to. And uh, so, follow me in this journey, and we're gonna be going through wild edibles and learning about the different wild edibles out there, how to process them, how to use them, and of course, eating really good stuff. So, I'll see you around, and catch you later. By the way, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to click that like button. We'll see you next time.